everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to take a look at part four of the Department 56 Sleepy Halloween vignette that we're gonna do. And today we're gonna to focus solely on the sign. So I told you in the very beginning of the, uh, the tutorial series that I wanted to include this sign, the Sleepy Hollow Farm, pumpkin patch and all that there into the vignette to kind of give it some more flavor besides just the homes. And so what I envisioned for this, it's gonna be kind of standing up like a billboard sort of, but I wanted a sort of a rustic wood look around the edges of the sign. And so today we're gonna to focus on creating that wood look. So with that, let's jump in real quick and take a look at the tools we're gonna to use to make that happen. Okay, so you can see the tools that I've got laid out here. Obviously the sign is here. Now what I've done earlier is I've taken the Proxon uh, hot wire foam table and I've cut uh, pieces of foam, and this is the more uh, uh, pliable XPS type foam that holds uh, engravings and uh, textures much, much better than the white two inch variety. This is a one inch variety, and I've obviously cut these down. And these are gonna be the wood panels that are gonna go on the side and the top of the, uh, the sign. So the way this is gonna work, at least for now, is this sign is going to be uh, hot glued onto um, this board. It'll all be painted black. And then these are the sides, uh, I believe. And then these are the tops and bottoms, something sort of like that. And those will be hot glued as well. And you can kind of see kind of a look there. Now, obviously we want these to look like wood. And so we're gonna, and then to put it into the diorama, I've got this dowel rod here that I'm going to uh, either stain, probably just paint, honestly, just a, a wood colored paint. And then that will be hot glued onto the back of the sign and then placed uh, with a couple of holes into the vignette itself. Now to help to get these uh, pieces here to look more like wood, I've got three tools that I'm gonna talk about. The first is called a handheld rasp, and this basically is going to scuff up, and this is used for sanding wood, or obviously it works really well on foam, and it's, it's gonna take some of the edges off, create some uh, uh, irregular, uh, irregularities onto the foam to more resemble wood. I've got this uh, wire brush. It's a very stiff wire brush. This is, these are nylon, but they're real stiff and then going across at a different angles, we'll put sort of a grain into the styrofoam. And the reason, again, the reason I'm using the styrofoam, one, if I use the white styrofoam, this is gonna make enough of a mess already. The white stuff would make a complete mess. And so this will hold the texture a little bit better. And then once we start mixing up the paint to put on this, we're gonna put a, uh, and I'll show you the paint once we get to that, that stage, but we're gonna use a uh, different type of a painting setup. We're gonna use a sort of a, a tan and sort of a butterscotch flavored colored paint onto this in different uh, random patches to get the base coat on each of these pieces of wood. Then we're gonna take a glaze and take the glaze along with some brown and a little bit of a gray mixture, mix all that up together, and then we're gonna put that on top of this. Then we're gonna take this tool, it's called a wood grain tool. It comes from, uh, I got this one off of Amazon. It comes with uh, three or four different attachments. This is a smaller one, about the size that we need here. And essentially, once you put the glaze on, you just kind of rock this back and forth as you're kind of dragging it across here. And it puts sort of a wood grain uh, finish onto your paint. At least that's what it's supposed to do. You can see by looking at it, I haven't tried it. So we're gonna see what that looks like. So. With that, that is a uh, kind of a, uh, some tools that we're gonna use. And so let's get right to it and uh, I'm gonna start carving. Okay guys, I am outside because this is gonna make a complete and utter mess, but we're gonna take this handheld rasp and we're just going to start scuffing up this wood or this foam to, to look like wood. And we're just taking some of the the edge is off to kind of get it uh, different. Don't be afraid to kind of get it. You really can't screw it up. At least I, I don't think you can. We're gonna try not to screw it up. So 
So, I think the rasp tool is done. So we're gonna put that aside and then get the, the brush. And then for the brush, let's do these one at a time. We're just gonna kinda of start dragging it down the foam, turning it and going a different direction. This foam is pretty thin. Really get the edges. So you kinda of see the edges of what that looks like there. Okay, you can see how that one looks there, like wood. So two are done. You see the differences between the, the textures, right? So, okay. So I think we're gonna call those done. That is the uh, sort of the look we're going for. So let me uh, get these cleaned up and then we will uh, start the painting process. Okay, guys, I'm back in uh, from doing the wood. You saw that uh, carving out there. Now let me show you how it looks. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. And I think we're obviously gonna be ready for some paint. So I gotta set that up. But in the meantime, uh, see if I can turn this camera around. I can't, so I'm gonna stop it and then restart on the, so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so here is what um, sort of the envision that I've got of the wood kind of surrounding this sign. And you can see that from a before and after photo with the with the, <laughs> the foam, it looks a whole lot better. It looks like wood. So we're gonna get the painting started. And so I need to get set up for that. But I think uh, this is gonna turn out uh, pretty close to the way that uh, I was envisioning it. Um, and uh, an old rustic sign to kind of go in the back of the vignette. So let's get set up for paint and uh, we'll start that process. Okay, so we're ready to paint. And so what I've got is two colors we're going to start with. And obviously you're going to see all of this as it's happening, but I got sort of a butterscotch uh, color and then sort of a tan color. And that's going to be my alternating base coat. So that's going to go on first on all four of these wood pieces. I already painted the uh, the main box, uh, the main uh, piece of foam, black, that's outside drying. It's black paint, you wouldn't be excited to see it. So it's already painted and it's drying. So this is gonna be the butterscotch and the tan as the base coat. So with that, let's take a look and get started with that. Okay, so we've got the uh, butterscotch and the tan and we're just going, now we wanna cover all of this. We don't want any bit of this to show through uh, when it's finished. So. This is gonna be our base coat. And so we're just going to uh, start putting this on uh, all around. Kind of getting that down into the foam. Uh, we're just gonna mix the colors here. We're gonna put some of the brown, uh, the tan as well. Okay, so that's kind of the look that we're going for. Uh, that's your base coat all around this thing. So make sure everything is covered. And then uh, I'm gonna do the rest of these and then we'll come back and look at the second phase of this process. Okay, so I've let these dry now and you can kind of see what they look like with that base coat of the alternating sort of a butterscotch color and a tan color. Uh, sort of close up. Um, looks pretty good, honestly. And I think I did an okay job of getting in uh, all the pink covered. Obviously, you know, not on the back. Nobody will see that. So now we're going to um, finish with the final coat. And this is going to be a little bit different. And I saw another uh, guy do this on YouTube. I saw it a while back, and that's what got me interested in doing my the Pennywise uh, big display that I'm gonna do for the front of our house. Uh, but I wanted to have that look, that, uh, that wooden look. I wanna use uh, big sheets of styrofoam just like this instead of making them very small, I'm gonna make it very big. But the same concept applies. So I ran across this video that shows the way to do this now is to take some 
uh, bear with me here. So I'm, I'm gonna have some brown Craft Smart paint, uh, some silver, or this is uh, uh, a more of a gray. Uh, so a, a, a gray and a brown mixed, probably a little more brown than gray. And then into that, uh, in order to use this tool, uh, it says it needs to be sort of like a glazing medium mixed in, so like a one-to-one -one ratio. So I'm gonna do brown paint, gray paint, and then uh, this glazing medium that's gonna be poured into that, mixed up to get that brown color, hopefully a darker brown than what's on there right now. And then paint that on, and then use this tool to kind of give it the grain effect. We'll see how that goes. I've never used this. So you're gonna see it uh, as I'm doing it. So we'll, uh, we'll experiment together and see if it works uh, and uh, go from there. So with that, let's start mixing some paint. Okay, so I've got a, just a, a solo cup here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some brown paint and I'm, I'm gonna make enough to paint all of these pieces. And then I've started, I've cut these down to a uh, manageable size and painted them basically the same color as this. So that'll get that'll get some of this paint as well. So I don't know, I mean, I'm just gonna use a, I'm not really measuring, so that's probably enough brown. I don't think I'm gonna use as much gray. Uh, maybe just a, a little bit of gray. And then about the same amount as that of this medium, this, glaze medium that should be good and now we're going to take this brush and stir this all up there you can see and that's a that's a pretty good color actually that's a really good color uh, so we're going to mix this up i'm going to grab one of these and i'm going to grab this and uh so here we go with the first first coat of this so Okay, so there's the coat of paint. And now we're gonna take this and sort of rock it back and forth, just like this as we drag it. Okay, and you can see the, the texture there, the color, and if you want some additional texture, you've got these little, uh, and kind of scrape some of that through there just to get a little bit more texture. Okay, uh, not, not too bad. I mean, I don't see the, a lot of the, uh, the grain in this. So I'm not sure. If that's working or not, I think I'm just gonna use this to kind of scrape some of that around like that. And uh, let's let that dry before we do any more and see what that looks like. Okay, what I found is this side with these teeth work way better. And so I've, uh, I've completed them all, but you can kind of see they're not dry yet, but you can see the, you can see the brown in this much better when I do that, it scrapes off some of that and leaves some of that uh, lighter brown underneath, uh, which I think looks a lot better. It's actually better as the paint is drying to come back and keep hitting these. So that's kind of what I'm doing now is uh, letting the paint dry and then going in various directions to, uh, to kind of let that uh, take place. And I think, this is actually going to turn out really good. I love the look of this. Uh, so I don't know if you can see that. Probably not because it's wet, but it looks really good. Uh, it's better in person than it is on the camera, I think. So, but this, uh, the harder you scrape, the better, the better it looks. So. Uh, I'm gonna let those dry. Those are all painted. Uh, and so those need to dry. 
Okay, I'm back in. These are now dry or almost dry. And I'm gonna take this stiff brush and sort of help to define some of that wood look. It's getting some of that paint that was kind of thick um, to kind of down into the cracks or out of the cracks. I think it looks uh, really good, honestly. Um, that looks about as close to wood as you're gonna get. So same thing on these. Just kind of get some of that, that stick, you know, stiff brush down into that a little bit more. And you could do that when it's probably even a little more wet to, to have a even probably a better look, probably a more mixed look versus just the dark. Um, but I mean, not bad for the first time and I'm learning, but it, it looks like wood and it looks like old wood. And that's kind of the look that I was wanting to put on this sign around this sign to begin with. So not too bad. All right. So, okay. So I think that looks pretty good. Not bad. Now I'm going to clean this mess up and we're going to get everything ready and get the hot glue gun fired up and we're going to put it together. Okay, so now we're going to hot glue uh, the sign down and then put the, uh, the wood around the sign. And so with that, here's the nerve wracking part for me, uh, but it is necessary. So Okay, you really got one shot at getting this on right. So, something like that. Okay, so the sign is now on. All right, so. We will allow that to dry real quick. And then we've got the side pieces, which unfortunately are not gonna sit completely flat. So I'm gonna try to glue them to the sign themselves. Uh, and so we'll see how that, that works. So uh, let's get another stick in here. And we're just gonna go right down this side here. Okay, so framed up pretty good. Looks pretty close to like wood, I think. Not too bad. And now we'll, uh, we've got to bring the, uh, the main uh, piece over and measure uh, for these sticks. So let's do that real quick. Okay, so I've got the base here. Uh, you saw uh, this last uh, the last video. So this uh, just fits in there, just like we thought it was going to. And so now I need to uh, turn it around and measure uh, for these poles because this is going to be sitting up um, a little way. So let me flip this whole thing around and start measuring. Okay, so I've basically got it turned around and I've got these uh, sticks where I believe they're going to go. Uh, and so now I'm just going to sort of mark just a line here where 
I know they're gonna go. This one's gonna be really close to the edge here, which is fine. Okay, now we need to get a depth. So, if uh, I want the depth, let me adjust this down just a little bit. So I'm trying to get a depth feel now. And so what I want to do is have that go basically all the way through. So something like that is as high as it's going to go. So these will now be glued on into those respective areas there. And uh, let's take a, uh, let's do that real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna glue these sticks uh, into place. I can maybe dent the foam a little bit. Maybe it's not, not doing too much here, but this is how this is gonna work. At least I think it is. Okay, it's quite a bit of glue. Okay, now we'll just let that sit there and dry. Same thing over here. Okay. Now we'll just let that continue to dry and then we'll come and get ready to cut holes into the styrofoam and put it onto the display. Okay, so this is now dry or at least dry enough. These aren't gonna go anywhere. That's sturdy enough to certainly hold this in place. And basically what I'm gonna do is I want it to overhang this river. I want the river to be coming out of the sign. I sort of want the sign to be somewhat centered. I know the sticks aren't gonna be centered and that's okay. Uh, but, uh, so we're going to bring, we're just going to kind of put those down in there just like that. And so you probably heard the crack, uh, but that gives me a better idea of where to put the hole. So now I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to take my hot wire foam cutter, my knife, bring this up like this. Let me adjust the camera so you can see. Bring it over here a little bit more. Okay, so essentially, I'm gonna go straight down through here. Just like that. Just kind of route this out right about the same size. Okay, and then that should at least allow me now to uh, put that down into the, the uh, into the styrofoam. So let's readjust the camera. Okay, let's take the sign. And down we go. So that's how I envisioned that looking. So that's that's about perfect. So that is the sign onto this display. You can see how that looks for the Sleepy Hollow Farm. And again, it'll be a pumpkin patch on either side and then the, the river kind of flowing through this into the waterfall that comes across the top. So uh, there you have it. Well guys, that's gonna wrap it up for part four of the tutorial of Department 56 Sleepy Halloween and the vignette that we're creating to celebrate 
uh, all of those gift sets uh, from Department 56. And so I am very pleased with the way the sign turned out. It's sort of what I envisioned to have, and I kind of told you in the very beginning, I wanted the sign to be included with some wood, old looking wood around it. And I think that's what we got. So I'm very happy uh, with the way it turned out. I've never done that before. Watched a couple tutorials on YouTube and uh, just tried it. And you saw every step of the process. So easy enough to do, not a big deal. Uh, you do need the right tools if you're gonna have it uh, turn out the right way. And so I can't stress that enough. So, hey, if, uh, if you like the video, make sure you click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. It certainly helps out the channel to grow. Uh, gives me the motivation to keep throwing these videos out. And so until next time, we'll take a look at part five of this tutorial series where we'll start doing a lot of the detail work the roads or the, the pathways, the grass, uh, and, and obviously starting to get that riverbed uh, painted and detailed up and get the, the resin ready to pour. So a couple, a couple, three more tutorials, and I think we'll call this one done. So uh, take care of yourselves. We'll talk to you again real soon.